Okay, so welcome one more time, and let's meet Ivo Peskens. Peskens, yeah. Yep. And let's get familiar with what is Scrum Master. Thank you. So, hello. Nice to see you all here. Thanks for coming to my talk. I hope it will be interesting. So, simple question, isn't it? I guess um, Scrum Master is also someone who is ready to wake up at 2 o'clock and come to hear from Riga. So, but yeah. How do you think? Is this simple or hard question? Who thinks it's simple? Can you raise your hand, please? One, okay. So, but um, how was lunch, by the way? Was it good? Um, I would like that you all please stand up for a quick, quick activity. <laughs> and um, you all know the daily stand-ups, right? There's three questions about what you do, probably all of you know your daily life. So could you please raise your hands who has been Scrum Master in the past and still is or still is? OK, thank you. Next thing, who plans to be Scrum Master in, in the future? All right, about the same. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, the last thing, who has issues with Scrum Master or being a Scrum Master? No one. Uh, oh, yeah, still. All right, <laughs> thank you, you can be seated. So, so I hope that this talk will be useful for many of you. All right, then let's, let's move on. And um, I guess you all know this picture or variants of this picture all, all around the web. And this basically represents the Scrum framework, all the ceremonies and the roles. And Scrum Master, of course, in the first place, that's the role in the Scrum. We all know that, I, I hope. Um, but as you know, you have seen, I guess, something like this as well. There are many, or s at least several, different Agile frameworks or ways of, of being Agile. And uh, I was kind of asking when I prepared this talk a question. So what are those other masters in other frameworks? By the way, who is practicing Kanban here? In, in so how do you call Scrum Master in a Kanban way of working? Still the same, yeah? OK. Any, anybody practicing XP? Do you have XP coach? OK. <laughs> All right, so, but I was actually eager to understand why Scrum has a Scrum Master, but there are other things that don't. And I found out an interesting article, and this table is a summary of it. And as you can see on the left side, four of the methods have specifically defined roles that are similar to Scrum Master. XP has a coach, DSDM has something similar, and in Kanban, at least what what I found, it's usually some change engine or agile coach. But the other things basically don't have such specific role at all. But basically, when I was uh, preparing and making the talk, I also used this book, which I have used in my own practice. And um, when you look inside this book, you basically find, uh, find out that agile coach is um, somebody who is doing many different roles, actually teaching, mentoring, resolving problems, um, facilitating teams. So you, c you name it. So basically, it can be m many different things. But the more interesting picture in that book is that Agile Coach is a pass for different roles. For instance, the, the traditional project manager can transit into Agile Coach over some time and practice. Uh, or tech lead, for example, as in this picture, as well as Scrum Master. Basically, in the beginning, is a Scrum Master, but as it as this person grows the knowledge and practice, it can grow into something more, like Agile Coach. Basically, Agile Coach is something we can consider that spans across specific methods, because these days, I, I think you would agree that in, in our businesses, we tend to use mixes of different things like Scrum and XP and Kanban and Scrum Ban and so. But let's get back to the Scrum Master and to the Scrum today. 
and look deeper into that role. And of course, according to Scrum guides, it's very put very sim in a simple way. Scrum Master basically is responsible that Scrum is understood among those people using it. And the other thing is that Scrum Master makes sure that Scrum team uh, follows the rules of the Scrum framework. Uh, but there is more in the Scrum guide, and you can represent Scrum Master as something like this, a three-headed dragon working in three dimensions at the same time. Working with product owner, with business, with making sure that the product backlog exists, and, and etc., cetera, et cetera. As well as the daily, daily life with development team, most of all. And then, of course, organization. How the wider organization understands Agile Scrum. And so we've heard in some of the talks today that uh, it's very important to talk to the stakeholders, to the business. So basically, this is also a role of a Scrum Master, according to Scrum Guide. But there is something more in that, which is which I would like to look into a little bit deeper, that Scrum Master is a servant leader. So we all know managers, we all know leaders, but what is a servant leader? It's an interesting term, isn't it? And um, going further, this term was coined by Robert Greenleaf in 1970. And basically, um, he defined that the servant leader is a kind of person who is, in the first place, taking care about growing other people and making sh make and caring about well-being of other people. And, of course, helps people develop and perform as highly as possible. So, basically, Scrum Master is focusing, or should be focusing, on people growth in the first place. So, the first answer today is that if you are a Scrum Master, you basically you, you need to like serving other people. It's not a project manager. Probably we can say that project manager is uh, focused on results, but th that, that here is the difference that Scrum Master is focused on the people who actually deliver the results. So you kind of, we can see the difference. But let's go on. I wanted to bring into this talk some broader uh, view on this role, and I used LinkedIn as a, as a place where to gather some input from different people about what they think this role is. And I created a discussion in a Scrum Practitioners group is anybody using, by the way, Scrum Practitioners Group on LinkedIn in the daily li lives practice? No? Interesting place. So, and these are the places where I re received responses from. And uh, here I did some most interesting ones. So, from New York, I received something that Scrum Master is not. You can take a read. So it's not a team lead, it's not it's a communicator, and it's not a decision maker. From India, Anu replied that that's somebody who is driving agility and creates sense of trust, and so like a sheepdog or servant leader acting as a wall to prevent team from any deviation or in interference. Um, this was interesting. Karen from San Francisco said that Scrum Master is like a house. Why house? Well, she explained that basically when people come to work and they work, they do their work, they need, they, they have the same needs like at home, right? So they need to drink, eat, there are other needs, they need to feel well at work. So Scrum Master's main task, according to her, is that to make sure that all is in place, everything is working, everything is fine, you have a great environment to work in. So how do you think, uh, is it possible to actually work if there is no house? <laughs> so next thing uh, from Seattle, Timothy replied that this is a person which is fluctuating among all these different roles. And what was the most interesting was that Scrum Master is like a stand-up comedian. He should cheer up team, he should be like the fun, fun guy as well, not just like being all the time serious and trying to understand why something is not happening. or 
Um, from Denmark, one of my favorites, by the way, is that it's somebody who is monitoring and nudging the team. Yes, the from Dennis, again, he emphasized that Scrum Master should have a sense of humor. This is like by default. If you don't have a sense of humor, then you're not a good Scrum Master. And uh, the way he puts it is that um, when there is a fun environment, people feel free, they're, they're relaxed, and they tell, tell what they really think about the situation. It's easier to work with them. And um, according to him, for him, it is much easier to talk in, 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 in front of a large audience in, than doing a grooming session or facilitating a grooming meeting. And from Chicago again, yeah, somebody who is responsible for continuous improvement and is uh, also a culture work, coaching and so. It's a bit more text, but so. <coughs> And of course, several people advised this checklist for the Scrum Master, which is pretty practical and extends a little bit the Scrum Guide. And first of all, the product owner. So Scrum Master is somebody who should try to answer these questions. For example, are all stakeholder needs in the backlog, for instance, so that um, is, it, is the backlog manageable? Is, is it like in a single place or? It's just example questions. There is a link you can find the complete checklist if you're interested. So regarding team, the key questions I, I liked, I think, which are important. Do people in the team like each other? And um, do they challenge each other? And etc. Uh, but regarding organization, interesting questions this checklist proposes to use uh, or to, to pay attention to is uh, this middle one dead useless? Like like Ken Schwaber, I guess said, if if if, uh, if a dead scrum master is useless one, so he should be fighting for and trying to, to remove impediments of different sizes. And what I especially like, the last question is your organization the best place to work, which is a very challenging, I think, for a scrum master. But this is at least in this checklist as a proposed for the Scrum Master work. So, and of course, this checklist also talks about engineering, which is out of Scrum Guide, which is basically about some extreme programming, probably, and other technical practices, like um, do you refactor or do you pair if, 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 if that's required. So, so kind of four dimensions also on the, on the Scrum Masters uh, every day. So basically, at this point, I would like to give the second answer to this question, and it's like this. Somebody having, some person having like multiple hats, switching all the time. But as you may understand, there is another answer coming, right? So a bit later, I would like to just to describe and, and actually to tell you my way to this role. And um, I would like to start with a white, white page. So about my, myself a little bit. So in the 90s, I was doing like, these are the key things I would like to, to bring in here. So I was weeding in the garden. I was also assistant in a stroller factory. F not for long, but just like, Sometime I was even a new a, a newspaper seller on the street. I was also acting in some online uh, t experiments series, and I was also selling the discount cards. It was a long time ago, the small small projects. But this was all about myself. I was alone here. So then 2000s came, I started to study in university and I started to study computers. So I worked as a system administrator for, for several years with Unix systems and, and I was users, su supporting users and I was kind of project manager, coordinator role at some point. Then I was a QA team lead. 
but all the time I was asking myself, who am I actually? W what is my calling, so to say? I was doing all these things because I, I was interested in computers. And then 2010s started and I again was studying in at university. And I ended up in a company called Opus Capita and I started to work with processes. And um, this was an interesting time because um, my, my first task was to understand like how, how processes work, how, how the value stream works, what people are doing in the company. It's a financial services company, Finnish based. And then at some point I found this book, which I read. It's a practical book. It's not just a reading. It's really, you go through it and you do some practical experiments with yourself, sort of tasks. And it helps ac actually discover what are your talents, what are your not your talents, what you are more likely to, to do. And it's, it's an interesting book and it helped me. I was going through it and I, at some point I was looking, of course, retrospectively back over, over what I've been doing before and um, I kind of find, found myself at some point that, that I really like to facilitate other people so that they, they succeed as a group. Because I've been in numerous lots of meetings where people spend time and they don't actually accomplish anything. And I found out that this is where I fit in, this is what I like. I like kind of make sure that others can reach the stars, so to say. And uh, that was around 2013, I would say. Uh, but now a little bit details. When I started to work with the processes, I, I was um, kind of surprised that um, those are invisible. People are doing things, but, but processes are on the paper, but not on the real, real life work. Teams are scattered ac across countries. They are not working as real teams. Uh, there are many tools. Information is again scattered in Excel, in, in this tool, that tool. It's not clear where is the actual backlog or requirements. And the, the, the biggest problem was the actual ba backlogs of what, what are we wanting to do. But at the same time, the company had that product lifecycle model which were clearly describing again on the paper how the product should be developed. Planned, developed, put into production, maintained and etc. And somewhere there was also Scrum. But in reality the way the organization worked was like very siloed. It wasn't working as a team. It was very scattered. And then at some point um, in the organization we established software development unit and uh, I became sort of a quality manager type of a person which were trying to now sort of uh, make sure that that scrum inside that big life cycle is actually working in that development unit. But um, I wasn't at that point really understanding real benefits behind scrum and uh, somehow I was acting more like a manager. Not li li literally like that, but I was doing the wrong thing, basically. I was trying to improve quality of how we work, going in a, in a wrong way. And for example, what I did wrong was I was using my position and I was enabling some check-in policies on the build server without even talking to anyone. Just like, I ca because I can, I do it. And it didn't work. And um, so the struggling went on. And at some point, yeah, I basically understood that I was doing things opposite to the Agile Manifesto. I was focusing not on the people, but on the processes and, 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 and what is written down and, and on the wrong, on, on the other side of the manifesto. And then at some point, I also was part of some project where we were investigating Visual Studio, TFS, uh, Scrum Process Template, Urban Turtle, similar similar to Jira, the visual project management tool on top of, of all the source controls and everything. And the new project started. And I was kind of there in the middle and I understood that, okay, this is something new coming up and that's the right place where we need to change, some, we, we, we could change something. And. Uh, I sort of, all these things I've done before kind of ended in a perfect storm. And this was the year when I decided to become a Scrum Master. 
because they understood that we have everything in place. We have different roles, people, we have requirements somehow existing, we have goal, and we have also that scrum on the paper. And then I kind of understood that the way to make Scrum work on a daily life is to actually, that's the task of the Scrum Master. And what I did, I actually became, I took off the jacket, so to say, and I became a Scrum Master. I stepped off the manager role, basically, and became a Scrum Master. Somebody maybe considered that as a manager role as well, but at least I'm not. So, what happened since then? We made it the backlog in a single place, made it visible and accessible for the key people over the web, like with Jira, for example. And uh, then we started th the release one. And as you can see, we had three teams in the beginning in three countries. Those are component-based, developing backend. This was me, myself, as a Scrum Master. As well, there was a project manager. So in the beginning, we didn't run all the Scrum events. People were frustrated sometimes because the cycle was too short. It wasn't possible to finish things in two weeks. The groomings were poor. Reviews were just with product owner, not with more people. And since we were building uh, a platform, not a regular project, so to say, we were also building infrastructure at the same time. And there were conflicts, impediments, and huge amounts of them in the beginning. But what we did in the release one was that we, me and a couple of PMs, we went to CSM course. And the course, of course, is a uh, two days course. It's, it just gives you some basics. But the biggest value from that course that, that we met a certified Scrum trainer. So, release two, we, we learned, we invited Agile coach, our backlogs improved and uh, we restructured teams. Now I would say this 1.5 Scrum Masters because the other person's project manager were more kind of starting to do Scrum Master type of work as well. Now we tried to do all Scrum events. And uh, what I did, I delivered the Scrum workshop for the organization. Uh, put together like all development, QA, also managers, and we did some scrum games. Uh, like ballpoint game, we talked about theory, about particular scrum events, what, sh what should we do there, what should, shouldn't we. Um, groomings became better. Um, the delivery pipeline started to also function and it started to appear we started to emphasize more on retrospectives to actually learn how we go and what we can improve. Review meetings started to expand. We invited more, uh, more users and stakeholders to those meetings. We did some impediments analysis and um, also the front end started to shine. Finally, people supposed to use the, the platform started to see the actual UI, so wha what is happening there and how. So it, it, it started to also improve the backlog because people started to feel what's there. And then release three. Now we were two teams in three countries, almost independent teams. Now it, I would say almost two Scrum Masters working each with, with one team. Um, now we had also more management support in Scrum. Uh, we also, since we ha had the front end now working, we also did the UI mockups beforehand, not in the same sprint, wh wh when possible, not always, of course. This is where I started to pay more attention to monitoring how people work, their conflict situations, uh, apply some coaching techniques, some retrospective variations. Uh, Review meetings became b better, and uh, since we were dispersed among three places, we did some co-location, and uh, this improved the team spirit. So basically, we flew together in one place and fi finalized one sprint and started next sprint together in one room. It, it, it really helped. Yeah, so um, by the end of that release, I would say that we were more flowing and, 
and feeling kind of better the way we grow and move on. So, um, yes, and then, it was in May, we received such a feedback from product management, um, which was very motivating, and you don't receive that kind of messages every day. And this message was, of course, uh, broadcasted to everybody in the project. And um, this is kind of thing that is needed to give also some good, positive feedback about the end result. So this is the top page of that portal we were building. And uh, of course, it looks simple, but uh, there are many, many sub menus and so the last answer for today's question is that uh, Scrum Master is basically someone who cares and doesn't give up especially if you want to try something new and uh, transform the ways we, we work I would say that Scrum Master in that in that case is kind of a transformer he's the one who is trying to change kind of we know all these change management things, but this is, to my mind, what Scrum Master does on a daily basis. He's the change get, change agent, change guy. He's the one working with different roles, and and it's sometimes very hard. It's not easy. There are lots of resistance and situations and, and, and misunderstandings, but kind of, yeah. So... I have some tips for you based on my experience and basically experience and what I think is important. So, first of all, Scrum Master is not a, m it's not a position, it's more like a mission. Because in the first place you focus on people and uh, if we talk about working with people then this is about trusting them, respecting, listening and empathizing. So basically you should be ready to to, to trust and, and accept div div diverse and different people. You should a lot work with yourself as well. You should learn to listen what people say, how they, how they see things, because we all see them differently. And someone even said that empathy is the most needed skill these days, to empathize other, with other people. So, whenever possible, I really think that, dedicate, uh, that Scrum Master should be dedicated, not doing something else, but just 100% focusing on his duties. Of course, contexts are different and companies are different, but it's, it's a full-time work, I would say. Yeah, once more, it's not about just a team or sprint backlog, or it's about different things, PO and organization. Uh, what I really like and what I uh, learn myself is that I get the feedback from the team I work with anony in an un anonymous way uh, regularly every like six months. It's, it really helps. You can see the positive things about you and the negative and how those gr change so you can learn from that and take that into account if you want to develop yourself and probably if you're a Scrum Master you, you need to develop yourself over time. Um, of course, find somebody who is more experienced and learn from him. More experienced in Scrum or in, 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 in some kind of Agile coach maybe or wh whoever that is. Yeah, learn coaching. It really helps working with others and, and, and helps growing other people when you learn coaching techniques. So it's it makes sense at least for me. So. Uh, yeah, pay a lot of attention how you communicate and to your emotional intelligence. Probably you have heard that there is this IQ and EQ, so sometimes that it's been said that emotional intelligence is even more important than IQ if you work with people. So, And the way you communicate as well, the way you talk, this is sophisticated topics and worse of def separate presentations probably, but this is something that's that I have found is important for me. Yeah, and mentor someone. Find somebody who would like to become a Scrum Master, for example, or transit from PM to SM and just help them talk about Agile values, about what that role is and 
that really helps you as well. And of course, read books, blogs, articles, LinkedIn discussions, for instance, are, always, are, are also helpful for me at least. And um, that kind of makes your view broader, how people work in, uh, in different companies and different contexts. So, um, since I became, it was 2.5 years ago, a really practicing Scrum Master, um, I would say that this picture is true for me. Uh, because, as I mentioned in the a little bit earlier, I, I kind of found that this is what I would like to do. And uh, when I work with the team, when I, when I see that they succeed, this is really kind of rewarding feeling. And uh, it's not that I'm going to work to some place that, okay, this is just eight to five and weekend is the place where I feel happy. No, it's not like that. It's I've managed to somehow turn it over and I wouldn't say that Friday is my like Friday now it's Friday now it's let's go have some beer um, Henry Ford actually said some time ago that uh, a business that makes nothing but money is very poor business but isn't it so that all businesses are poor then because we all make money no, isn't it so but um, <coughs> the challenging question I would like you to ask you today here is, and so you, you think about is, what about your business or your organization you're working on? What kind of organization you would like to become or be? So, thank you. Thank you, Ivo. And have any questions? No? Oh, here we go. Uh, when you're working with uh, different locations, uh, like yep. say your team is in different locations and your Scrum Master is sitting in one location, but the product owner is sitting in another location. So the team people, rather than approaching the Scrum Master, it will be easy for them to approach the product owner. So how Scrum Master has to deal with this? Luckily, product owner is in the same location with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the problem with distribution is that, of course, we use uh, we use HipChat as a communication tool for chatting on a daily daily basis, and uh, it is very hard to actually monitor all the ways how team can talk to product owner and, and opposite. But. Um, uh, well, what what I what I've been doing on a daily basis and trying to do is monitoring that conversations that 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 channel, and what we agreed as part of the team that this is our working agreement that HipChat is the only channel we communicate, and then there are meetings like grooming, like planning, and um, it hasn't been a problem I would say. We've kind of managed to agree that the specific tool is the way we talk. Okay, thank you. Did it, did it answer? One more. Oh, more questions. Yeah, please. But what are the reasons to basically only hip chat? Why people cannot collaborate and communicate uh, across the, I don't know, coffee machine and so on? Because we are distributed in three places. And to call to product owner? Just? It's not, n well, no, no, it's not, it's not, uh, they are not, uh, it's not uh, like disallowed to talk to product owner, no. Kay. It's just that HipChat is our main tool because we, we have integrated that with the build, m build system and, uh, but it's not disallowed, no, it's just we agreed that let's use this as a main tool. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, how you can uh, explain what is the role in one sentence? Scrum Master's role yes. in one sentence? Yeah. Mm, interesting question, one sentence. Well, I would say, I, would, I, could, I could say in one word maybe, a beekeeper. There is this beekeeping style of management that you basically don't 
manage people, but you make sure that the environment is so that people can freely self-organize and work. So. <laughs> so what are your main activities, daily activities during the day? What do you do? What I do? Well, I facilitate daily meetings, daily stand-ups. Well, we, those are not stand-ups, basically, but those are like daily sit-downs. <laughs> um, then, uh, since we are distributed, we I, we spend a lot of time organizing and uh, spend a lot of time organizing and finding uh, the times and calendars when we can do groomings effectively. Um, since I uh, work also as part of another virtual team, as part of continuous improvement, we have lots of meetings that they we we solve problems with with still working processes and. Um, helping other parts of organization understand that scrum way of working in Agile. Uh, regarding team, as I mentioned, I try to see what they do, monitor the conversations on HipChat, uh, always be open so that they can come to me with problems, resolving impediments. We often have uh, still some firewall issues because we have remote environments and um, so very well, it's. I wouldn't like to go into details, but still, it's working with impediments as well. Um, what else? Uh, some time also is spent for just thinking about how to solve this or that thing, or how to improve. Also on 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 my own as well. It's yeah. That's the overall overview, shortly. Okay, one more question. Um, keeping in mind the spirit of the team being a Scrum Master, uh, how would you uh, see that uh, sh should uh, the relations between uh, you and the people stop at the professional level, or is it also important to uh, involve uh, the personal side as well, for example, involving the family and uh, caring about that? Um, involving family, well, I don't think so. I think that um, it is important to know about teams, families, or does anyone has children or not, or what, 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 what's, how is, who, who is, how, what, what's the lifestyle of each team member? I think that's important, and uh, that we, we used to talk about on uh, lunch times or coffee breaks, so that, but you mean involve like if, as part of uh, daily life, or? Yeah, I don't disagree. We haven't done exactly that way. Um, we've been doing some team building outside of, of office and of outside of every day, but without families, just uh, as a team. But probably that's not a bad idea. Yeah, to to I'm not against that. Why not? First of all, well done. It was a good presentation. You could feel that it comes from your heart. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, one question. You probably know this uh, Scrum Master checklist with these uh, four main questions that, I mean, if you know, don't know, I mean, uh, I like this as, I mean, uh, they say that this, a Scrum Master should ask himself or herself every day four main questions. And the question is, how is my product owner doing? How is my team doing? Yeah. How are um, our engin engineering practices and how is my organization doing? If you recognize this question, more or less, that you're asking yourself sooner or later, how would you say that you, you know, split your time in percentage on taking care of these four areas? Ooh, a statistical question there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that. Uh, well, 
the percentage varies depending on where you are in the sprint or what happens, but let's assume that we are in a running sprint in the middle, then I would say the team is in the first place. Um, the organization is always, I think, in the background. Uh, I would say the team, the product owner, and but I really can't give you percentage. I would say it, it just depends. On, it's it's also dynamic and um, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm I, yeah, I'm thinking about those, and I'm. This is also part of my everyday to kind of think about the strategy for myself like how, what 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 could I bring in new from engineering to the team like I f read something on the web and find out how to put this in and of course retrospectives those are quite a lot of time to prepare for them because it's not just another meeting you need to prepare yourself and think about what metaphor you will be using or and this is what people like the most that we vary with retrospectives we do them differently not just like Standard columns, good, bad, let's do change this. There is a nice book about retrospectives. When you actually go through that book, you can find out that retrospectives are much deeper meetings. You can reveal interesting things there. Yeah, but the team, I would say, in the first place. Okay, thank you. And I have one question. What is m m most challenging, I don't know, problem, impediment you run into and if you got solved it? Most challenging? As mm. a Scrum Master, of course. There was, um, there was some, some point where we we felt that things are going apart and the teamwork kind of destroys and um, I decided that we need to get together and spend time as a team call it a team building whatever but uh, and uh, that happened and uh, we also did some work during that and after that event I would say majority of the team said that this was great, we need to do this regularly, this helps us and I think this was kind of, this helped bring team back on track, kind of uh, more, feel more like a team I guess. That was the, why it was challenging because it was a little bit challenging about organizing this thing because it was short of time and it was organizing the, the tickets and the place and, and all the activities and this was sort of um, and getting the costs approval as well for that because so that was kind of a team issue yeah I would say yeah. okay thank you Ivo and small gift from our organizers thank you yeah. thanks Thanks.